intended to provide an understanding of corruption as is called the negative impact of corruption on the African continent, turning corruption and the way forward. Corruption in Nigeria and the work of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, and finally the way forward in the fight to eradicate corruption not only in Nigeria, but also in Africa. I think I will save your time. I will bother you with the definitions and the concepts. Look at the literature review data. The negative impact of corruption on Africa. This presentation supports the view that corruption is one of the factors that contributed to the current predicament of the African continent. The World Bank estimates that about $1 trillion are given out as bribes worldwide. <coughs> representing about 3% of the world GDP. There is another dimension of corruption in Africa that is worth mentioning because it's greater destructive potential. Because of its greater destructive potential. This pertains to large-scale corruption perpetrated by a ruling elite, top government workers politicians, businessmen, bank executives, captains of industries in the private sector and the rest. For example, between 1970 and 1996, capital flight from sub-Saharan Africa through corruption totaled $187 billion, an amount that exceeded the external debt of the countries involved. The report of the high-level panel on illicit financial flows from Africa, which was launched and endorsed by the AU in February 2015, revealed that currently Africa is estimated to be losing more than $50 billion annually through illicit financial flows. I think this is an old one because uh, Mr. Tabo Mbaki visited Nigeria and he gave us another figure, much higher than that. These outflows were derived principally from commercial transactions, tax evasion, money laundering, drugs, arms and human trafficking, <coughs> bribery, corruption, and abuse of office. The panel added that Nigeria ranked first among 10 African countries by cumulative illicit financial flows from 1970 to 2008 with a total illicit financial flow of $217 billion, US dollars, consisting 30.5% of Africa's total share of illicit flows. This unprecedented financial privilege indulged by African ruling elite and their domestic and foreign collaborators have produced two immediate consequences. First, the huge amounts stolen by them and taken out of the continent and hidden in safe havens in Europe, North America, Asia and other places have virtually crippled social economic development in Africa. <coughs> Secondly, the corrupt act of these unpatriotic Africans, African looters have grounded many private and public enterprises, pushing some countries to the bed of financial ruin. Throughout the African continent, corruption has caused severe wastage and misallocation of resources, delayed growth and social economic development through means investment opportunities, lower growth and widen inequalities. <coughs> Likewise, corruption continues to decrease government revenues, undermine private sector development, and increase inefficiency in public sector. In addition, corruption discourages foreign direct investment 
by creating economic uncertainties, increasing operating costs, and distorting incentive for investment. Accordingly, according to corruption is the single greatest obstacle of economic and social development is a disaster. Beyond doubt, the negative social the negative social, economic, and political consequences of corruption on Africa are crippling and unbearable. If this trend is not arrested and reversed as a matter of urgency, or as well as a country, as a continent, is in a serious jeopardy. Now, taming corruption and the way forward in Africa. Taming corruption is therefore the only way forward for Africa in the quest for economic development, political instability, and social progress. Fortunately, the task of taming corruption in the continent is being undertaken by anti-corruption agencies within individual African nations and through collaboration with a number of international agencies. There are a number of international conventions and legal instruments that are facilitating the fight against corruption in Africa. However, in my opinion, the most far-reaching anti-corruption investment instrument sorry, of global significance is the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. This convention contains both mandatory and non-mandatory provisions as one of the several legally binding international anti-corruption agreements <coughs> that significantly facilitate the fight against corruption in Africa. Nevertheless, the African continent has its own African Union Convention on Preventing and Combating Corruption, adopted by head of state and government of the African Union on the 11th of July 2003 and ratified by 38 African countries by 2018. These conventions contain 22 articles with several separate provisions that clearly stipulate the ways and means of effectively preventing, investigating, and prosecuting corruption in Africa. The provisions led to laundering the proceeds of corruption, <coughs> fight against corruption and related offenses in public service, illicit enrichment, access to information, funding of political parties, jurisdiction, minimum guarantee of a fair trial, extradition, confiscation, and seizure of proceeds and instrumentalities of corruption, bank tracing, cooperation and mutual legal assistance, and international cooperation. It is important to say that the African Union Convention on Preventing and Combating Corruption primarily consists of mandatory provisions constituting a landmark development in the past. This convention is a manifestation of a continental consensus on what African states should do in the areas of prevention. In the areas of prevention, criminalization, international cooperation and asset recovery. First of all, the African Union member countries have taken additional practical steps to facilitate the fight against corruption. One of such was the designation of the, the 2008 as the African Anti-Corruption Year, which was commemorated <coughs> in most African countries with lectures, rallies, media events, and other public relation activities. The experience of Nigeria in fighting corruption Okay, I will just
just remind you, that it's, 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 I think it's, it's what we have seen. Um, just a, a refresher, just refresh your memory. Nigeria is one of the countries in Africa with high level of corruption. However, Nigeria also has a robust anti-corruption regime and agencies determined to fight and defeat corruption, defeat corruption. <laughs> Therefore, rendering a brief account of the Nigerian experience in the fight against corruption is relevant to the topic of this lecture. One of the campaign promises of this government was to clamp down on corruption by presenting and implementing a national anti-corruption strategy. This promise was fulfilled on the 5th July 2017. 17. The National Anti-Corruption Strategy is a blueprint for a realistic, comprehensive and integrated plan for reducing corruption in Nigeria in line with Article 5 of the United Nations Convention Against Corruption. Article 5A imposes requirements for state parties to develop and implement or maintain effective coordinated anti-corruption policies. One purpose of national anti-corruption strategy is to help generate and maintain the necessary leadership and broad support required to effectively curb corruption in Nigeria. It is also to produce coherence and synergy in a holistic effort to rid Nigeria of the menace of corruption as it provides, and I quote, a platform to all sectors and stakeholders in the fight to combat corruption. The National Anti-Corruption Strategy is designed to intervene at the legal, policy, technical, and institutional level and promote a multi-pronged approach that strengthens the capacity of a dedicated anti-corruption and public accountability institution initiatives that promote and increase alignment of private and public interests as well as engage more actively with, with the public. The NSCS adopt an approach covering the five thematic areas of prevention of corruption as public enlightenment, <coughs> campaign for ethical reorientation in the public and private sectors, enforcement and sanction and recovery and managing of procedure of corruption. Once again, I can boldly point to the effect of sound anti-corruption policy on the economy, social and political well-being of nations. I'm looking again at the examples coming out of Nigeria as well. The government of President Muhammad Bari has made giant strides that saw introduction of integrated payroll and personal information system, if it's which, implement, which implementation has led to an extraordinary reduction of ghost workers, saving the treasury <coughs> billions of naira every month. The whistleblower mechanism put in place by the administration has yielded enormous monetary recovery to the treasury and reduced corruption. At the commencement of the government of President Mohamed Bari, only two billion was in the federal government recovery account, and most of them are they came from oil subsidy account. But as at today, this account has succeeded in netting over 400 billion naira, translating to 1360 1, percent increase. Policies of government of Muhammad Bari that are reduced corruption and corrupt practices. Treasury single account, TSA, the bank verification number. The administration has equally signed a number of highly rewarding mutual legal assistance treaties with a number of countries that have translated into tremendous recoveries of proceeds of corruption. Improved investment climate in Nigeria. Yes, uh, the anti corruption strategy is structured. Deliberately, structured and designed deliberately to create a, a very conducive investment climate. We encourage people, both outside the country and inside the country, to 
invest. So uh, there are a lot of Nigerians who will come and suffer in the in the diaspora, and they will contribute money, and they will give it to one of their friends. They will go and buy property for them. I took it very seriously. There was some some Nigerians who contributed the money, and uh, I made sure the money is defended. So, uh, if you want to invest here, you want to come home, invest. If you have any problem, let me do a background check for you, so that you only deal with people who are credible. There is beauty of investment in the country as Nigerians has recognized the right of the investor, both local and foreign, as enshrined in our constitution, which states clearly that no investment can be taken from its owners without recourse to the law. Outside, the, outside of the constitution, there exist several laws that protect investment in Nigeria. The constitution also recognizes the result of arbitration process and others arising therefrom. Judiciary in the country has a practice court to give legitimacy to award and arbitration clauses in agreement. In her belief in the sanctity of the judiciary, the government of Nigeria believes in the rule of law and the independence of the judiciary. Improved ease of business in Nigeria. I want you to come on. Following the introduction of policies by government to increase the ease of doing business in Nigeria, the nation has gained the four points of excellence in the Global Ease of Doing Business Index. The improved ease of doing business in Nigeria currently experienced in Nigeria is the result of plugging avenues of petty and bureaucratic corruption. This in turn has improved investment appetite of investors in the country who are assured that not only are their investment set, but in the event of disputes, they will get their award. The effort of the Economic and Financial Crime Commission in fighting corruption. Do I read that? Or we discuss that? Because uh, you have seen the figures in the listing. Conviction, etc. Recovery. All went. Declaration 
of public office holders need to be reinforced. Most public and private office holders do have a, a forum for declaration of assets. Need to be reinforced in order to institute probity and accountability in public service. This should be accompanied by a concerted effort aimed at strengthening existing gaps and effective enforcement and effectively enforcing internal anti-corruption control within the African state. Similarly, <coughs> it is necessary for all African leaders to adopt a policy of naming and shaming all those who engage in corrupt practices while encouraging and ordering those who do not. In this regard, whistleblowers should be celebrated, honored and encouraged to become full-time corruption hunters. <laughs> <laughs> the corruption fighting strategy we should formulate for Africa should be one that is predicated on mass education and mobilization at grassroots level. The masses should be actively involved by taking ownership of the fight against corruption. That's why I'm here. I want to take I want you to take ownership of the fight against corruption. You have also a mandate to fight corruption. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing. But I'm telling you, you have, you, have, you have a role to play. One of the best ways of realizing such a goal on a permanent basis is by incorporating anti-corruption lessons in our schools curriculum from the elementary level upward. We should make it clear to our children from a very young age that corruption is not only bad, but detrimental to the process of human societies. We must expose all corrupt individuals and ensure that the younger generation does not grow up thinking of taking, of looting government treasury as a career path. <laughs> Finally, we must figure out a way of communicating the anti corruption message to the public through different avenues such as song, music, drama, and poetry to mention a few. All these are vital to galvanize mass participation in the fight against corruption. Prospect of future economic development. There is no doubt that we, we undertake the necessary measures for strengthening and enhancing the fight against corruption. We will begin to see positive indication of African economic development devoid of corruption in a relatively short period of time. This can be achieved using existing legal and other framework already in existence in Africa. By fighting corruption effectively, we will have succeeded in contributing to the realization of the economic goals of our African Union, which include the creation of a free market, a custom union, a single market, a central bank, and a common currency. These noble goals are realizable if we agree to commit ourselves to the war against corruption in a sincere and determined manner. Ladies and gentlemen, in conclusion, in spite of the depth and gravity of corruption in Africa, we can confront and defeat and kill corruption through collective action. As a man-made problem, corruption can be solved with man-made solution. Fortunately, we can learn from the successful fight against corruption by Hong Kong, Singapore. Hong Kong was near in endemic corruption in the 1960s and 70s, but has now transformed itself into one of the least corrupt countries in the world. Singapore recorded a remarkable success in the fight against corruption because of the political will <coughs> demonstrated by the country's leadership. A robust <coughs> corrupt practices investigation bureau and a workable anti corruption strategy that focus on effective laws, strong enforcement, and an and, and independent judiciary. In spite of numerous challenges, Similar success stories are beginning to emerge on the African continent. Significant progress 
in combating corruption have been recorded in several countries in Africa. These imagined successes stories should inspire us to rise up and fight corruption with increased vigor and determination. In doing so, we look forward to support and cooperation of all Africans and friends of Africa. We need a global alliance and strategic partnership to successfully defeat this transnational crime. It's a disaster, it's a monster. I urge all of you sitting here to be part of this alliance and partnership in the interest of Africa and the rest of humanity. Finally, I wish to conclude this presentation by assuring you in my capacity as the chairman of the head of anti-corruption in Commonwealth Africa and the current financial crime commission in Nigeria that we will not relent, we will not let the people of Africa down in the discharge of our responsibilities. We will fight corruption with all necessary ego and determination. We will not rest or waver until this crime is eliminated. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, what next should I say? You can see that this lecture, we actually selected the right topic yes. and uh, justice has been done to it. Yes. Except there is argument from any angle. Then, uh, what I'm hearing is that, uh, because what we are trying to do is to go and take a tea. Because from what I have seen here, and I heard from this man, I, I think uh, people would like to take tea. <laughs> before we come back. It is not see, I've been conducting research into corruption for the past 30 years. In the US, in Jamaica, I talked in Jamaica for 20 years. You follow? I have never when I had this man, I right from the beginning I said, I must bring this man. I like people who are very, very pragmatic. You say the truth and die there. Nobody can kill you right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What the good work you are doing, you must continue. Amen. Nobody no. can kill you. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> can kill you. Now, what do you choose? You want to confront him now, or we should take this? Um, I'm happy that he's here today 
And um, my question, my, my, my comment, and maybe a question is that I represent a company that actually is that's called a new, a new, new tech, a new tech that will help the FCC. Now, when you actually um, have cases, how do you actually um, make sure that those cases are I mean, go to the court process and be dealt with effectively? So I have um, a new system called the VAR uh, system. They are actually asking system. questions now. It's a new way of how people can be verified and screened. Um, it could be maybe before a court case. It could be maybe for um, asset uh, declaration. Or it could be maybe for all the short cases that's pending that EFC can actually use. Now, from, ex from experience, I know that whatever you see uh, the Nigerian officials here, and you give them the documents, no disrespect to you, I know you're very, very busy. Um, I don't want to, to read, I want to read it, and probably you could have time for me today yeah. or tomorrow to so go through some more detailed yes. information we will discuss, what, uh, we'll discuss okay, you what I want to present to you. The previous speaker. That's okay. We'll sit down and, uh, about that. Yeah. Yes. Because That's for me, I believe that we can all talk about complaint and, and talk about Nigeria and yes. 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 But the solution is yes. 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 You came to it towards the end when you said corruption on time. Now, so things came to me from what you showed there. Now, if the notes, Tony, they were fresh from the printers. How can a single person carry those sort of money without having some speed? A click. And as you, it's towards the end, you came to it that i corruption hunters. You need to concentrate. Because what people, they have people, hundreds of people, who help them carry this money all over the place. That's number one. And how can one person in Nigeria get away with that sort of money when people are around that area? So, I mean, something is wrong somewhere. I'm sorry, I'm very busy. I cannot stay too long. We have a, it's a charity call in this country, Prince of Africa Consortium, and also in a Nigeria Trust Nation Builders. I am the president and the visionary. I'm going to go. I've written that detail there. If you get back to me, I would like to get in touch. Yes, I would. Very because we need to. Bless you. We need to collaborate. That's right. Because uh, on this road, yeah. I have just question because we haven't got the time. Yeah. Yeah. Very very cool short down short short yeah. Very cool. yeah. So we need to move. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I wish you a last protection. I wish you a happy anniversary of your office. My question is this. What's your, your opinion of jail time as a deterrent strategy which appears not working as before? Because this was an assertion of Mr. President last month in Paris. That's one. What are the biggest challenges of fighting corruption in Nigeria? Is it legal framework? Or is it the influence of the Western nations where the money is tied to Swiss, Swiss banks? Or is it the legislative harm blockage that we saw in the media before you, before you are confirmed as an acting chairman? Or, or they are inability to confirm you as acting chairman of the EFCC? But we ask God, that's everything, to confirm you and protect you. So that's my question. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry, we will just ask the question and uh, the chairman will now give a block answer. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, we, we, we actually, there is a lot of emphasis. One very good strategy in fighting corruption is you, you need to take away the profit from the, the corrupt. Because if you don't take away the profit, you will jail him. I mean, he will go back and, and use it to fight the common. Yeah. So we, there is a lot of emphasis on, on really tracing and recovering proceed of corruption. That's why we are involved. That's why we show you a lot of the houses. <coughs> and uh, one of our frustration is that in our collaborating with our friends outside the country, like here in London, you agree with me that the issue of designing has stayed for so long. Why should one matter be investigated for more than three and a half years? In this era of uh, artificial 
intelligence, or is it uh, digital banking and uh, cryptocurrency? It doesn't really make sense. So these are the areas that you help us. You have to, have to constitute yourself into corruption hunters and follow all these things and put pressure that uh, uh, if they cannot, you should repatriate them back so that they can be prosecuted in Nigeria. Yes. <laughs> yes, you said the biggest challenges. Of course. Is Corrupt, it corruption, corruption fighting. Yes, yes. You have a proper grip of the situation. Yes, we have problems in the, in, in the judiciary, but I think there is less problem in the judiciary now. We have recorded about 217 convictions this year alone. So because of the, the enactment of the uh, ADJA, Administration of um, Criminal Justice Act is, is facilitated and, they are there and, and it's going on fine. But the greatest challenge is corruption fighting back. They are chasing you in Hatter's Gate. Mm -hmm. Everywhere. Mm -hmm. so that, that's uh, yeah, that's right. Thank you very much for coming and bless you. Thank you, sir. Uh, the question is one, I want to know how I can reach you regarding buying properties in Nigeria to a very good source, you know, not yes. money being stolen. My, yes. Yeah. 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 That not money being stolen yes. when I invest. Yes, thank you. The second one is I want to know from you will this be extended, what the job you are doing now, will it be extended beyond 2015? Because we are, we know that before 2015, when did the Buhari regime yeah. took over? It was 2015. Yeah. The corruption is as far back as 2015, isn't it? Yes. What I'm asking is, are they going to lower the period below that time of 2015? Because we are all aware that before 2015, there were a lot of corruption in Nigeria. No, no, there's a lot of corruption. So we, the, the moment there is incident of corruption, we go after you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Thanks. Yeah, yes, sir. Well, thank you very much indeed to Dr. Bakri and his team for bringing this conference together today. It's only thanking your uh, presentation for thanking all those people who were here before you. I think it would be fantastic, it would be very, very stimulating. Corruption is not new. Introduce yourself, sir. What? Oh, sorry. Um, my name is uh, Jimmy Adekunoye. I'm a local councillor in London Borough of Lucian. I've been civic mayor for my borough for seven years. And now, former mayor. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, um, when the gentleman who confessed the second speaker, you are talking about uh, corruption of uh, local authority. I mean, that I hope he, he was not here now, but I hope he was not referring to the UK because I mean, an action of uh, corruption in any local authority in this country is, I mean, you pay for it without hesitation whatsoever. Now, what I was saying say earlier was that corruption is not new. When I was a school child in Nigeria, we have a station in school where we had some badges and lapel as your bribery scorners. That's over six decades ago. And we are still talking about the same situation nowadays. Um, we cannot blame anybody for it, but the fact that it's still going on all this time, there's no point in going back to damage be done to development, the damage is done to happiness, the damage is done to the uh, uh, family, and so on and so forth. Now, my, my question, uh, very, very brief, the question is, you know, most of, most of the money, the decent money, is exported to Europe. Now, if we get aid from Europe, particularly London, if we do not spend it properly, we are exposed. So what are we doing to expose those European countries who are reluctant to release the stolen money back to Nigeria? And also what are we doing about those people who facilitated it? Because most of the money being coming from developed countries is being scheduled through professional accountants from Europe. So you are fighting at home, please, how will you strengthen fighting abroad? Yes, uh, please let me answer this one, it's very important. Yes. Uh, we collaborate with other law enforcement agencies with, with other countries to do what we are doing. And uh, these are the areas the Nigerians in diaspora will have to keep. 
because without information there's nothing you can do. If the Nigerian in diaspora can expose them because you know them, you don't have to appreciate them, you don't have to celebrate them, you know them all over the place. So you who live here or other part of the world, outside Nigeria, you need to collaborate with us, you need to synergize with us, so that give us the information. If there is information, credible information, we will go after anybody in the whole world. So I think this, this is the area. This is the area we need your assistance. We need your collaboration. That's um, uh, sorry. Let, let John, and then we'll come back. Come back. Thank you. I, I'm John Taylor from the Queen Mary University of London, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, from the law school. And I had just a very simple question. Do you, uh, within Nigeria, with all the other good things that you're doing, do you uh, have a law relating to unexplained, unexplained wealth? Yes. yes. Similar to, and, and how do you implement it? Exactly. Just last week, there was a judgment delivered by the Supreme Court of Nigeria that if you have an unexplained wealth, if you have a, something that you cannot explain, <coughs> then the burden to proof has now shifted to the accused. So, uh, if you have something that you cannot can, cannot be justified by your unknown income, the burden to prove otherwise is it's working. It has worked. It has gone up to the Supreme Court. And just last week, I don't know whether you are paying attention. Last, just last week, there was a Supreme Court judgment. So, we are working. We are also uh, partnering with our colleague in the NCA to see how we can be brought on board. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's very important. I, I absolutely agree with the, the principle of uh, an explained words order. Uh, my name is uh, Professor <coughs> Kemen. I'm, I'm a professor of criminology and I'm also uh, working in judicial capacity. Um, when we talk about solutions, there's obviously the um, issue of uh, judicial um, responsibility in Nigeria and here. And when money moves over to this place, the burden of proof and the process changes. You're aware of that. And you now call on diasporas to take action. That is doable. But you have to back it up because the, the whole thing is based, is evidence-based. You see what they write on group WhatsApp. They can just call somebody up and say they're so terrible. <coughs> Fake news is everywhere. The only way we can, diasporans can do this, is to set up a strong advocacy organization that can take legal action on your behalf. But it has to be based on you supplying credible evidence that can stand the test in court. The whole business about fake news going around, we mm. cannot do anything with it. You know the 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 whistleblower policy applies to everybody, both Nigerians and non-Nigerians. So if you are able to give us, if you are able to blow a whistle, a proper whistle here, we are able to work on it and uh, get it done. I mean, you also get your five percent, and uh, we have a whistleblower protection unit that protects everything. You understand? So the collaboration is. It's working. If you are here, give us information, we'll work on it. We we'll recover something. 5% will go to you. And I, I am, I'm sorry, and uh, this is not what you are saying. I just want to, to the, the, these are the areas we can collaborate. There are certain things you cannot do as an individual. But if you can have <coughs> the information, we will act on it. We have a very good relationship with the law enforcement <coughs> agencies in, in UK and in other places. You can also help us to put pressure on the UK authorities to repatriate the loot, you know, and then to extradite the looters to enable us to take judicial action. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Two things, uh, basic. Firstly, thank you for coming. Um, the other thing I want to make you aware of, I was with the Crown Prosecution Service for many years. Our brilliant Nigerian colleagues, lawyers, prosecuting great crimes. They would want to work in Nigeria, you have to make it conducive. They're there, they have the experience, and they will make some of the mistakes. 
Secondly, I've been in Nigeria for a month. I just returned. There's an issue with regards to, first and foremost, there's an issue of trust. I encountered traveling through Nigeria via highest buses just for the experience. We have a situation where offices in uniform on certain roads, very few yards, are out there collecting bribes, stopping highest drivers, collecting money from them. It affects, it affects the public because you see normal people, farmers, people getting their food to the market, and they see this, people in uniform denigrating the office of the police, the uniform of the police. And we're talking about that respect. How are we going to, normal people, the poor, going to have the confidence on the police force and institutions of the state? What you're doing is at the top end, you're doing a brilliant job at the top end, but we need to convince the very poor. And when I was talking to the very poor, they're saying, look, we're used to it. This is the norm. There's nothing we can do about it. So they've lost confidence. So I need it to be poor from the bottom. And I think the masses need to see offices of the state being respected. And if you can do that, you have, you have only seen the one with the policemen on the road. You need to go to the hospital. To the airport. Go to the airport. <laughs> so that's why I say the best strategy in fighting corruption is to mobilize everybody, let everybody take ownership of the fight against corruption. We need you. Please, when you come, come and see me. Yes. We have to collaborate together. Yeah. Thank you for the work you have done. I think my, my question is a slight extension to the gentleman that spoke. You're doing brilliant. I've seen the video. I never thought it's as big as this. And I've always thought it's at high level. And as a stretch to what that gentleman has said, government institutions, you know where they are, the passport office, the police station where people have to pay for bills when bill is free. We know at the airport where people give receipts for in, um, taking foodstuffs out of the country that they doesn't get into the uh, government board. How are you filtering that? And what uh, effort are you making to get this fight to state government level. All this talk about corruption is only at federal level. The IPPS you have implemented has not been taken on by any state. The BVN um, and, and the um, TSA, no state government is binding into those proposals. How do we want to fight the corruption if there is 36 against President Muhammad Buhari, who is playing in this fight? Yes. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, yeah. Okay. Yeah, mine is a quick question, and I will see why we stand up a little bit. I'm just returned from Nigeria. I've got a little petition which I'm handing over to you. I, uh, I sent money to Nigeria, 150,000 naira. My sister phoned me, I've got 150,000 naira, thank you. And we didn't tell me if the money was withdrawn. I've been battling this since June. And anywhere I go, when I went to Nigeria because of it, how much is 150,000? And I think. It's not too small for me. Please, this is my petition. A petition. I want to be where, where, where is your sister? It's in where do you live? You don't know. Yeah, I've got, I went to Lagos State Police Command and the day they were asking me for money, they sent my letter and, they, and I asked them, can you give me an email? If I, if I'm back to London, Did you send the money to an account? I sent it to an account, GT Bank. All the details are there. The BPN of the man who stole the money is there. And this man must have stolen more money since June. He should be arrested. My details is there, please. Thank you. Come back and tell them. Thank you very much. <laughs> Sorry, my dear. <laughs> Sorry, my dear. Please, just listen to them. This is very interesting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Bola Mutukanti. I am a PhD candidate at the School of Oriental and African Studies here. And Mr. Chairman, you spoke about collaboration, collaboration, and being corruption hunters. 
Mr. Chairman, I have been one, and I haven't found the experience well, I mean, good with EFCC. In 2015, I wrote a petition, forwarded a petition on behalf of current state pensioners against Dr. Rabiu Musa Konka, so former governor, alleging non remittance of 10 billion naira into their account and provided evidence of misappropriation of their properties in Abuja to your office. The matter was taken to the court by Konkoso, seeking to enforce his fundamental right because he has that, that EFCC was going to arrest him. EFCC officials in Kano made affidavit on oath saying there is prima facie case in the petition I sent and that they were going to investigate it. Konkoso instituted another action at Kano State High Court alleging information and his case was dismissed and I personally conducted the case. But until today, EFCC has never invited me or my clients to hear from us. And then to cap it all, EFCC zonal operation, um, I mean zonal operation, head of operations in Kano told the media in October of 2016 that they have never received any petition from anyone against Congress and that they are not going to investigate him. Mr. Chairman, fighting corruption is about perception. And that's why Transparency International measures corruption perception index. And these kinds of acts, because Konkoso was in ABC, tells the world and others in Nigeria that the fight against corruption is only directed against opposition. Mr. Chairman, let me make my point, let me conclude my point here, that there has recently been 14 videos going around of Kano State Governor allegedly collecting bribe of $5 million. Allegedly. Ganduji, Mr. Chairman, was reported yesterday by Premium Times, I don't know whether that information is correct, that you said you cannot investigate him for two reasons. One, he is a sitting governor, and two, it is subsidized. Mr. Chairman, you investigated Pai while he was a governor. Yeah. Secondly, there is a decision of the Supreme Court, firehead against Inspector General of Police, reported in 2002 in Volume 7 of the Nigerian Muslim Law Report, in which the Supreme Court said a sitting governor can be investigated. The only thing you cannot do is you cannot arrest him Look, and you cannot take him to the court. One of the reasons. Sorry, Mr. Chairman. No, no, no. One of the reasons here. Sorry. sorry. I'm, I'm working on it here. I'm personalizing it. I'm working on it here. Here, one of the consultations was on the forensic analysis of whatever is contained in the video. I don't have to investigate on the pages of newspapers. Yes. Can I correct you? Yes. Excuse me. How authentic is that video? And that's the point I have to say. I if you don't have, the, have, have uh, are you in APC or PDP? <laughs> have you been invited? Because you have not committed any offense. So if you have not committed an offense, we will not invite you. The two governors I just referred to as convict that have been convicted, they are in APC. Johnny Niame is APC. Darie is APC. They are the members of the ruling party. So it is not true for anybody to insinuate, to suggest that we go up only after non APC members. I don't think it's right. We go after people who have committed as well, who have case to answer. Period. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry. I said I haven't completed. I Find out what actually happened. To okay. Mr. We'll Chairman, it's this. your commitment that you are going to investigate Ganduja's allegations and tell us if the videos are correct. I mean, if they are the rules, they still would be prosecuted after he leaves office. Is that your commitment, Mr. Chairman?
Corruption has been identified as a major impediment militating against Nigeria's development. Indeed, Africa is set to lose about $50 billion annually through illicit financial flows. A sizable fraction of these emanates from Nigeria, hence the premium which the President Mohammed Buhari's administration placed on tackling the scourge. Apart from making the fight against corruption a cardinal program of the government, the first critical decision by the administration at inception was the creation of a number of initiatives to pilot the government's determination to eradicate the MINAS. A national anti-corruption strategy was developed, which is a framework for a coordinated approach to the anti-graft war in Nigeria. The strategy which has since been flagged off is premised on five pillars, namely prevention, public engagement, ethical reorientation, enforcement and sanctions, and lastly, recovery and management of proceeds of crime. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission EFCC, the most vibrant anti-corruption agency in Nigeria, and currently led by Ibrahim Mao, keyed into this strategy framework by developing reforms within the EFCC system in order to usher in a radically improved approach to tackle corruption in Nigeria. Prevention, which is a cardinal objective if the fight must be won, was given the top priority. To this extent, Various preventive initiatives were designed towards public reorientation and enlightenment. These programs include the Nigerian Women Against Corruption Project, which was developed to increase women participation in the fight against corruption. The program was flagged off in Abuja, the Nigerian capital, by wife of the President of Nigeria, Aisha Buhari, in December 2016. The same program was rolled out in February 2017 in Lagos, Southwest Nigeria. Other geopolitical zones of the country are built to follow soon. The Clean Hands Campaign for Children was also flagged off. This campaign was designed primarily to promote the values of integrity and poverty among the younger generation. The Creative Youth Initiative Against Corruption is another laudable initiative unveiled in October 2016 by the EFCC. The idea was conceived out of the need to give children a platform to express themselves using arts and various talents in order to speak against corruption. To further deepen the participation of young people in the anti-graft war, the EFCC established integrity club in schools and tertiary institutions across the country. And in a bid to draw more attention to the anti-graft fight, awareness roadworks are also organized quarterly in collaboration with various stakeholders across the country. The Commission also has anti-corruption programs on leading radio and television networks across Nigeria even as the social media has been fully embraced as a vehicle for mobilization 
and information dissemination. Other reorientation mechanisms employed include engagement with members of the civil society organizations, the organized labor unions, and stakeholders in the public and private circle. Town hall meetings are also employed to create a face-to-face -face interactive platform with community and religious leaders, just as various groups within local communities in the grassroots are also engaged. Musical concerts are also staged to draw more attention to the anti graft messages. Another cardinal objective of the National Anti-Corruption Strategy 